cool, 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 cool. Okay, so another experiment that I have just thought of here is uh, another, another, another Pluto experiment. I always like to experiment of Pluto. Everything seems to come back to Pluto. Uh, in every single episode here, where the hell is Pluto? There's Pluto right here. So here's Pluto. Pluto's got its new skin now, now that the uh, New Horizons mission has... <laughs> Wait, is that Pluto's spin? Does Pluto have like a Uranus orbit? I don't really know anything about Pluto's spin. But let me slow things down here just a bit. What if we once again let Pluto redeem itself? What if without changing the mass of Pluto, we changed the size of Pluto to where it is the biggest object in the solar system. But not the most massive object, the largest object. Oh, look at that! There we go, that's the actual skin of Pluto. And then you can't, like, see the rest of Pluto. That's what I hate about, like, New Horizons. We only got, we only got one side of the planet where we got, like, a high-resolution image. And then, like, the other side of the planet, it was kind of fuzzy still. We gotta get an orbiter around the Pluto, that way we can actually see what it looks like. 50,000 kilometers! Okay, there we go, now it's going back to 29,000. It's now the mass of 297 Earths. But what if I put it to 100,000 kilometers radius? Okay, oh, now it is a... <laughs> now it's a gas giant. I don't want a gas giant, though. Let's get rid of all the hydrogen. Come on, there shouldn't be any kind of rule that says that this is gonna be a gas giant. Although, I guess when something is so massive, that will make the pressure so great that everything will be, like, lava. And maybe everything will eventually turn into a gas giant by everything heating up so much, it turns into a gas ball? It could be why everything turns into... It's just, it's just the states of matter. Everything gets so hot, everything becomes a gas. It's just a theory. Alright, let's, uh, let, let's just slow things down. Really slow things down. I want everything. I want, uh... I don't want it to turn into a sun, though. I just want a really, really big planet. A million... Many, 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 many kilometers. And now we've got a black hole! Pluto has now become a black hole. <laughs> How many... It's the, it's the radius of 377 Milky Ways? I did not intend for that to happen. Um... I think I'm, I'm pretty sure I just uh, engulfed the solar system by doing this. The whole solar system is gone, it's just complete blackness everywhere. And for some reason, uh, there is all of this happening right here. Can I make this even bigger? Alright, 377 Milky Ways. Like, why leave it at 377 Milky Ways? Let's leave it at 10,000 Milky Ways! Okay! And then we get an even bigger blue bubble around here. 85,000, okay, whatever. How many more Milky Ways can we get here? I guess that's about- what, are we hitting like a cosmic limit here? Is this the cosmic limit that we have? Is this the size of the universe? This is, are we looking at the universe? Have we turned Pluto into the universe? <laughs> what if I make something orbit this thing? Let's see how chaotic this will be. So this is uh, only two, this is two minutes per second. What's going on here? Um, let's get a star just orbiting this thing. Holy shit. Is that it right there? Is it orbiting? I think it's still orbiting it right there. Okay, and that's just a star. Where is the largest star that we know of? Wasn't it, uh, is it like Canis Majoris or whatever? That's like the biggest star that we know that makes the sun look like a speck. And right now it's a speck compared to this black hole. So we got that black hole right there. Okay, let's get this orbiting from this distance. Let's get this orbiting from this distance and that distance. See, we're getting our own little galaxy going here. We got a lot of gases everywhere. Okay, so let's, let's zoom in. There it is, there it is, there it is, there it is. Hello, Mr. Star! Actually, this thing has its own gravitational lensing just by being so massive, I'm pretty sure. Then it looks like it's feeling, it's really feeling those forces. Oh boy. I love how this is, uh, this is Pluto. Pluto is the massive black hole ever. How many million years does it take for this thing to orbit, too? How fast is it gonna go? Okay, hours per second. Nothing has budged yet. We're basically frozen in time. Okay, how many years? Okay, currently we've got 6,000 years per second right here. Things are still barely budging in this system we have here. 650,000 years per second? We're basically... How much time does it take? We are breaking time and space with the size of this black hole. Oh my god. Seriously? Oh, that's how many million years per second? These stars are living and dying before they can make one orbit around this insane black hole. Holy crap, this is... 
Has this thing died? This thing is already supernova And the supernova has dissipated ever since then. What is this thing now? It's just, it's all it is is a supernova remnant. And it's just being a big, white hot thing. Wait, is the star starting to come back? Everything's starting to come back now. Oh, now it's blue. Now it's white again. <laughs> it's so cool seeing all these phases of the stars. They actually, they actually, the suns do end up burning up. I want to get one full orbit. Here we go, here we go. Look at all that flashing going there. This phases of all of these stars. How many years? We've got how many years? I'm assuming G years means giga years per second. 13 billion years per second. And that's how f how long it's taking for everything to orbit. Keep in mind that the, the universe, or at least in theory, that the universe is about 14, I think 14 billion years old. And we're all we're pretty much going the age of the universe per second around this insane black hole. <laughs> this is the black hole to end all black holes. I could probably place like so many stars and they'll never even like come into within like gravitational like influence at all. I'm actually going to get rid of all of these trails here. That way I don't see anything. God, I can't even see the dots. These are the largest stars ever. And I can't see shit. Like I, I want I want something for comparison here. Like here's the black hole we have now. Uh, let's let's uh put in what should we add? Let's add galaxies. Did I just place the Andromeda galaxy in? Why is this thing called No Name? Oh, I just placed in another No Name. My computer might be crashing here. Hold on. What is this? What is? This? Wait a minute. No fucking way! I was like, where is it? Where is it? So this is uh the galaxy that I just placed. This is a galaxy. That's the black hole that I have just placed. <laughs> I'm expecting this massive thing like I'm about to meet like this equal match to my black hole that I have a galaxy versus a black hole. But no, no, the galaxy, the galaxy is a speck. I could actually make galaxies orbit this black hole. This is the, the universe broken. Someone shot the universe. This <laughs> this is great. I like this thing. I'm so fascinated. It's so big. You gotta think big in the universe. So where is like the event horizon? I'm assuming like this, this ring around here, this is the event horizon and it's the point of no return. So everything, is there like relativity in this game? Because I really want there to be relativity in this game. That'd be really cool. Let's just get things orbiting so close to the event horizon. And the event horizon of a black hole is basically the point of no return. Uh, once you cross the event horizon of a black hole, you cannot escape the black hole. <laughs> okay, I'm like really breaking my game now with all of these stars. And I guess the random galaxies that are supposed to be massive, but they're just blips on the radar. <laughs> like these little clouds right here are supposed to be millions of stars. I am going to attempt to create, not a binary, but a trinary solar system. I think I'm just going to use suns. Let's just use our own sun to deal with this, and it just disappeared. I would like our sun to come back. There's our sun. Okay, so let's just have a sun. I think I just want this to stay still. This is our sun sitting here in our solar system, or just in space right now. Uh, but I want a nice binary solar system right here but how would i make a trinary like a binary solar system is very easy like there we go we've got all of this going how do you get a trinary solar system how do you get these all to behave and orbit each other in unison that i do not know i mean i could maybe just get uh this sun to orbit the binary system and then would that be considered a trinary system or would you need to have like what would the formation be is it would, would it really just be as simple as just placing this right here and then maybe they'll just behave let's see what happens if i just do that dance stars dance stars come on influence each other all well, these things are getting very close come on dance stars dance 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 oh boy it's getting close okay oh Holy shit. Okay, they have successfully avoided each other. They came extremely close. This one seems to be... Where's it going? 
I think one of them might be escaping. These two are gonna need to- oh boy. Oosh. How do we get a nice trinary system? Is a trinary system possible? What if- okay, let's use the grid here. Let's use the grid. Let's keep things paused, actually. I don't want anything- I want everything to be completely fair. Okay, so we get one sun right here. We get one sun right here. Are they just going to pull into each other? Are we going to nullify the forces? See, this sun is going to be gravitationally attracted to this sun, and it's also going to be gravitationally be attracted to this sun. That means we got forces in the same, in the opposite directions, which means they'll cancel each other out. That's normalizing the force. This sun should stay relatively stable. Now let's keep this going. So then that's going to make these things oscillate. It's going to be gravitationally attracted. That's going to go that way. That's going to go that way. Okay. So, would this be a pretty solid system? <laughs> Are they going to eventually turn back around, though? This sun seems to be getting more gravitationally attracted to this one for some reason. Let's just see if this is stable. If these suns stay stable. Alright, boom. Boom. Oh wait, oh my god! Holy shit, it stayed! They're staying, okay. And stay! And... Oh my god, okay, they crashed into each other and left the solar system. <laughs> I need to redo my calculations here. A binary star system. How will things work? You get a, su you get a sun being attracted to that sun. They're of equal mass and they're both just being attracted and they're technically pulling towards each other that way. Why do a binary star system or a trinary star system when you can do a pentastar system or a quintuple star system? Let's see what happens when all of these stars are danced up with each other. Everything is equal distance apart, which means this sun has a complete normalized force. Everything is being pulled in pretty much all directions equally. Which means it'll probably just get torn apart. Let's see what happens. They're dancing. They're dancing. Everything is staying stable. I think they're actually all staying relatively in unison. Oh no, one no, 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 it's starting. No, no, no! The sperm is leaving. Why is it leaving? That's probably like the small errors that I made in the placements. And now the sun has been slightly pushed off to the side to get a little bit closer to one of the stars. It's like star Russian roulette, and then we're gonna have a supernova! No! Oh my god. They missed! Ooh, nope, missed. Yep, there it goes, there's that one. Good. There we go! That's it, it happened. I wish they can obtain the center of mass of this thing, because there is a center of mass of this. This is a very stable... Let's just slow it down just a little bit. This is a pretty stable binary star system. I think, like... I think it's because the center of mass changes as the stars get further apart. They're not, like, staying within the same... Maybe that's what the key is. Maybe I should just keep these at, like, the same distance at all times. They never get super close to each other. They're always just spinning. They're always in a spin, but the distance is always staying the same. Therefore, the center of mass is always staying the same. But how do I do that? We may actually have a little bit of a working trinary star system here. This star here is orbiting the system. I just want to make sure they don't end up getting super close, but it seems like they're all still relatively keeping their distance. Okay, as soon as I start seeing some patterns, I will feel very confident with this system. But things seem to be relatively stable still. Doesn't seem like this is a full circular orbit around everything, but... Everything is working out. It does seem like we have a binary system in the middle, then we have one star orbiting around said binary system. So now that we do have a little bit of a trinary star system here, I'm not sure if this is the perfect way to do a trinary star system, but it is a trinary star system regardless. It's more like a binary star system with a star orbiting around it. But this is probably the closest that I'm going to get to my knowledge. I would like to... What if I took the smaller star? Let's see, I'm gonna place Bernard's star, which is a smaller star, and I'm gonna try and have it orbit this star from this kind of location. Okay, let's see if I can have Bernard's star go into some kind of 
cre <laughs> figure eight formation. Okay, come on, come on, come on, go, 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 go. Okay, so we got a smaller star, hopefully going to go through the middle of these two suns. It's currently orbiting this sun right here, but once it gets to about this path in its orbit, it will hopefully get captured by the orbit of this star, and then that will hopefully get some kind of figure eight formation. That's at least how it seems to work in my head. This plays out. Come on, play out well. Play out well. Okay. Okay, here it goes. Here it goes. Okay, go for the figure eight. Go for the figure eight. Go for the figure eight, Bernard Star. Come on. Come on, Bernard. Okay. And then it will get captured by the gravity of the second sun, but it seems to be going right into the sun. Rest in peace, Bernard. <laughs> oh my god, what did I do? What did I do? I have these stars actually um, in orbit, but the center of mass is not changing at all. This is kind of concerning me because I think I got them at the perfect distance from each other where that won't happen, so they're just dancing around each other. Which means I might be able to make something swoop in uh, to get captured by their gravity. So let's try and do this. Okay, okay. So I need to get, uh, let's get Bernard Star in here. It's gonna orbit. I want it to orbit at the center of here. Okay. So what if I get Bernard Star in there? What will happen if Bernard Star goes in between these two stars? Okay, Bernard, come on. Come on, Bernard. Get captured. Get captured by the other star's gravity. Come on, Bernard. Come on, Bernard. 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 No, Bernard! <sighs> oh, I can't even do this anymore. <laughs> oh, I give up. I give up. This is trying to star system stuff. <laughs>